By the end of this class, you should be able to build something like this on your own. So let's get started. Okay, here's the scenario. For some reason, you want to keep a list of all your um, best friend's names, and you want a program that print them out every time you run the program. Not the most practical application, but a good place to start. First, let's find Python and start the application. What you see right now is called the interpreter. Hello, I am the interpreter. It runs the command you type in immediately. Uh, let's first try some of these commands. First, this command will print out hello me. The next command, we're going to multiply two numbers together. Okay, why don't we add two numbers together now? Or import a, from a library. Or a command like this, which draws a window. As you can see, you type in the command and it gives you a reply. Of course, if you type in the wrong command, it will give you an error. In general, this is a good place to check your commands if you're not sure how they respond when you're programming. Since the interpreter is not designed to take too much code at once, it is generally preferred to program in text files first. Save it as a Python application and run the entire code together inside the interpreter. Sounds like a lot of work? It isn't, trust me. To start a new file, let's go to File, New. You will see a new window. This is where we will put our code. First, let's save this file as a Python file by going to File and Save. For the sake of uniformity, let's call it first.pyw. You can really save it as any other name. What's in the name anyway? But make sure it ends with .pyw. Once you have the file saved, we're ready to go. You want to start with telling the computer what you want to use to run your program. In general, if you are using Microsoft Windows, it will automatically search for the appropriate program. So you don't really need this line. But it is still a good programming idea. In our case, we want to use the Python interpreter. So type this line as the very first line. Like I have promised, we're going to create a list of our friends' names. To create a list, we will type this command. As you might have noticed, the sound of the keyboard is actually completely out of sync with the typing. This is supposed to be a joke emulating the old Japanese movies. As you can see, we have friend list equals to a bunch of elements. Liz, Tom, Ralph. Liz, Tom, Ralph are the elements inside the list, and the list is called friend list. You can make this list as large as you want or as little as you want. For example, if I want to add another friend, I simply have to add another entry. And now, if you want to print out the list, it's actually really easy. You say print and the name of the list. Python, believe it or not, is known for how similar it is to English. And once you have typed this, you're done. Also now, in the last step, we want to run the program. In order to run the program, go to run and run module. 
A quicker way, a shortcut to run the program would be F5. Notice how the interpreter automatically takes the friend list and print it out. If you have a problem running this program, go back and check if you have spelled everything correctly. If you still have problems, make sure that you have the most update Python version installed. Right now, okay, let me sh make a little transition. I want you to picture writing a program as analogous to building a house. You will need different tools for different jobs. And depending on what you are doing today, you would bring a different toolbox. It is very similar with programming. We import different toolboxes for different jobs. The only difference is that we call them libraries instead of toolboxes. For example, right now we are going to import a library that allows us to draw windows and buttons and menu bars. This library is called TK Inter. In order for us to include this library, we import it with this command from TK Inter Import. By importing the TK Inter library, we're really taking a toolbox and using the tools inside it. With this library, we can now draw windows, buttons, menus, as well as many other widgets. So without further introduction, let's first draw a window and call it root with this command. The way graphical interface work is that you first create all the windows and buttons you need. Once you have created them, you tell them to appear. This command we just typed only creates the window. If you want to run the program now, you won't see a window. So to make the window appear, you have to type this, type this following command. If you have typed this command, you are ready to run the program. To run the program, go back to F5 and you should see this. If you are running in Microsoft Windows, you probably get this error. Don't! This is normal. All you have to do is close the interpreter before you run again. Oh. And it should work fine. Try to run again by pressing F5. Good job if you have made the window successfully. Next, we're going to add a list box. The purpose of a list box is to display a list of things. In our case, we will be displaying a list of our friends' names. To add a list box, we will use the following command. In this command, we create a list box called a uh, list box. And we create it inside the main window we previously declared called root. Just like the window command, the previous command only creates the list box. If we want to make the list box appear, we need to use a separate command. This one, list box dot pack. What this command does is that it packs the list box inside the root. Remember, root is the window that we created previously. Without this line, the list box will not appear. For some reason we will explain later, you want to make sure to have the command root dot main loop at the last line. Now you can try to run the program again. If everything is still running fine, we are finally ready to add our friend's name into the list. In order for us to add the names into the list, we use a for loop. And type this following command for item in friend list, list box, insert, and item. It is key to note that the second line is indented. The program will simply not work if you forgot to indent the second line. You can interpret this line as saying that for each item in the list, 
inserted at the end of the list box. We will explain the detail of the for loop later, so if you have problems understanding this line, don't worry about it for now. Once you have placed this line in the code, run it and watch the glory and get ready for another applause. Okay, this concludes the third lecture for your homework. Try to run a program with two list boxes. One box contains all your favorite movies and the other box contains all your favorite books. Your program should look something like this. If you have any difficulties doing this exercise, you can find an example code to this program under the answer folder in this chapter. Well, that's all for now. This is Che. Until next